Well, welcome back to RDWorks Learning Lab. Um, today we're going to carry on with the mirror setting procedure. When we finished at part three, I was convinced that I'd got my machine set up perfectly. A follower of this channel, who's obviously a lot more experienced at setting mirrors than I am, he pointed out that I'd stopped one step short when the laser came out of the nozzle we established that I'd got it set perfectly at the focus point but what I hadn't done was to check whether or not the laser beam was coming out perpendicular to the surface. Now it doesn't really matter whether it comes out perpendicular to the surface or not if you're only going to ever use thin materials on the machine. Card, maybe up to a millimetre thick Anything over a millimetre thick you may have a problem. So consequently what I'm going to do in this session is try and rectify that problem and to help me do that I'm going to manufacture a little jig. Now this is basically a target holder and it's manufactured from five millimetre acrylic. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about programming this because at this stage um, unless you're jumping in and just taking a look at this because you're curious then you will know how to program this up. Well here we've got the pieces for our little jig. Now <clears throat> this material is 5.2 millimeters thick and I designed the slots to be 5.2 as well the same size so they're basically size for size and now that they're cut I should be able to just pop them together and they are a nice snug together that presses together nicely and then this piece here just fits on the top <clears throat> like that well I thought you might like to just see the targets being cut I never tire of watching paper being cut So here's my little alignment jig for checking how the beam is coming out of the nozzle. We'll put the target into the top spot there and make sure that it's sitting against its little location tabs. Now we'll pop that on there and we raise the table just enough to very lightly clamp it. There we go, just very lightly clamped. And there we go, we can look through that little hole there and we can see the target. So we'll just do a pulse test on that to start with and see where it is. For a moment we could just tweak that with our mirror at the top here and see how we can get that slightly better onto centre. And we'll repeat the test now. There we go, that's not too bad. But what we'll now do is to drop this down to the lower position, which is 20 millimetres lower. And now we will just do another burn. Oh dear, it's out by probably at least three millimetres in a 20 millimetre drop. We've got to try and get that back into a vertical position. Moving the mirror around will not change that. So there's some sort of alignment problem with the beam hitting the, uh, the lens. Right, well I've now put my target in the head behind a piece of masking tape and I'm only putting a slight pulse burn onto the surface with a bit of luck. So we should be able to see how far the pulse burn is away from centre. Hmm. I think the first thing that I must do is just to check the beam is correct at both ends of the stroke. So here we are looking down at the head at the closest point. Pulse. Now we'll check what this one is doing. It looks to be pretty well spot on. So we're fairly happy that the beam is running true in both axes across this x-axis here. Okay now we've checked the alignment of the beam we will just do a pulse test because this is what we really want to know. And we do a pulse test down at this 20 millimeters lower. Still quite a long way off center and we'll just put a very quick pulse on that surface. And that basically tells me that we need to move the head across that way to get it onto 
true centre of the beam. Now the other thing that I must do is make sure that my head is upright in both planes, that plane and that plane. But there's no point in doing that until I've moved the head across. Well, I've not had this off before, so we're going to take the top off this and have a look, see what's underneath here. Now we've got the same spring arrangement that we had on one of the other heads. Now the problem is that the clearance holes in this piece here don't seem to be adequate enough to allow me to swing the whole thing around. And so consequently what I did before, I opened up the holes so that the springs didn't pass through but I had a lot more clearance in here. Okay, well now we know how this uh, mirror system works on the top here. I've opened up the holes to from 5.2 to 6.2 millimeters so there's a lot more clearance and I'm going to put a small amount of grease just in the hole there but it will allow this whole head to float much better and the other thing that we need to understand is how these clamp screws work because all they're doing is once you've got them set you tighten them up onto this thread and it holds the plate in place I thought it was locking these little uh, I thought it was locking these little pieces, but it's not. These little pieces are just little tensioning things. And in this plane here, well, it's not perfectly upright, but it's not far out. It's all to do with the screws at the back here. And I may well have to take the whole of this head off to align this bracket. Well, as you can see, I've got the whole of the head off now in my hand. Um, I've got the mirror off. Um, I couldn't actually get much more destructive than this um, and all for a very small error but I'm going to do it just as an exercise um, I'm not advocating that you do it um, I think if you get it near enough as I had it at the end of part three for most applications that would be good enough lock that one up hard it's still nice and true down that edge there. We'll check this edge here. That looks pretty good as well. Now in this plane <coughs> we've got to set up two things. We've got to set it square and ideally while we've got it loose we may as well set it back onto true centre. So we need to move that across by at least two or three millimetres. So I'll leave my square there so I can see how much I've moved it. Let's just check that. That looks pretty good for centre position. So I'll just lock that bottom screw up nice and tight. And that seems pretty square still. We'll just check to make sure that we're still burning on centre. Looks like it. Now, I suppose that technically, if this is machined at 45 degrees properly then I should be able to just squash this mirror down completely onto its seat and the mirror should be 45 degrees angle and true in that plane so it should automatically send the beam straight downwards that's the theory let's have a look to see whether or not we're anywhere near the truth okay I'll stick my target down with uh, with masking tape so that we can see through the target so that's approximately where it would hit the lens. So we drop the lens tube down and we'll now lift it up carefully, make sure we don't move this block and we'll see how far off centre we are with our beam. A little bit, but not a lot. So what I'm going to do is to just gently steer that beam, see if I can anyway, onto the centre of that target. Well, that looks pretty well spot on centre. So just to summarise, we've set the beam up so that it's true in both of these planes. We've then moved the head physically up and across until it lines up with the centre of the beam. And then we've made sure that the head is upright in both planes. And that should guarantee that the beam goes right down the centre of this tube here. And then finally, we've just tweaked the mirror 
to make sure that the beam is going through the center line of the lens itself. The very first time I took the lens out and I checked which way the lens was fitted. And this is something called a plano convex lens which means it's curved on the top there and flat on the bottom. And the curved side was fitted upwards on the holder so that when it goes into the machine the curved side is downwards. I've just done some reading and the conventional way of fitting a lens is exactly the opposite way. Now whether that's going to help me with my focus problem I don't know but I'm going to give it a try. So we'll install it flat side towards the work. Also, I've been reading that many salespeople, when they sell these machines, say to the owners, the correct way to install your lens is to look into this end of the lens system with the lens about two feet away from your face. If you can see the whole of your face, slightly distorted, but like a mirror, then you've got your lens the right way round. If you can't see the whole of your face, the lens is the wrong way round. Now that I've installed it this way round, I can see the whole of my face. So I suspect that from day one, my lens has been installed upside down. Well, I think you can see that's substantially better. We're probably only about one millimetre apart now. So turning the lens round has definitely had a small effect because I've changed very little just a little different little bit of focus so what I will do I will carry on moving my focus point across I think possibly I may well have fixed it let's just see it's not on center by a long way but Provided the beam is coming out of the nozzle. Well I think you can probably see without the aid of a magnifying system how the little teeny weeny hole there goes not quite probably within a half a millimetre of being concentric with the brown ring around the outside. Now I've not had them anywhere near that close together before. So in terms of setting the machine up I really wouldn't want to change that. So let's do another quick check which is to see where the laser beam is coming out of the nozzle and we'll use my nice simple nozzle burn test and there we go we should have left a nice circle in there that's better it's over to I suppose as I stand in front of the machine it's about 11 o'clock I'll do that same test at the four extremities of the machine so the beam is actually very very consistent at all places on the machine it's not central to the nozzle but provided it's not hitting the side of the nozzle I really shouldn't be worried I think we've achieved what we set out to achieve and there's only one way we're going to find out how good that is and that's to do a thick material test now you can't see it, but I'm looking down the side here and I can't see the same drag on the cut that I was witnessing with the lens the other way up, to be honest. Very slight drag. It's not the best cut right across the bottom there. It has been better, but it's not bad. The main thing now is those edges are pretty square. Now, just as a quick comparison, Here's what we had before. You can see the angle on that edge there. And now if I move along to this end, you'll see that the angle on this edge is the opposite way round and quite significant. So that was the reason for the problem. It was a bent laser beam, mainly because I hadn't got my lens in the right way round. And secondly, because the laser beam wasn't firing through the center of the lens. So I hope we're all learning a little something from this, I certainly am.